talking to the spec screenplay winners Mika Goldman and Griff Kohout from Los Angeles, California. They are the winners of the New Girl Summers Over screenplay. How's it going, guys? Going good here, beautiful Venice Beach. Venice Beach, California. I'm talking to you outside of Toronto, and it is snowing like crazy, and it's about two feet of snow outside. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> we won't tell you about the weather here. It's beautiful Venice Beach, right? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. All right, so you guys are the winner of the New Girl Spec screenplay. You guys saw the reading all, all online. It's already doing really well. People, a lot of people are watching it. What would you, would you guys' first impression of the, of the script reading? I thought they did a great job. I thought they had uh, they had the right energy. Uh, they they uh, captured the characters well. I thought uh, I thought overall they did a really good job. And your co-writing partner? Yeah, they did good. Everybody was good. They brought it, and uh, they were well cast. And so, uh, in terms of the reading itself, like why New Girl? Like in terms of spec script, why did you guys uh, why did you guys center on the New Girl? Uh, you know. The show has clearly defined characters that we thought we could get the voices of. Um, I think the plots are, are really fun. There are, there are a lot. Most of them are about very little things that become big things, which is uh, you know something that we find funny. We're kind of big fans of like Seinfeld's Curve, and they have a lot of plot lines similar to that. Uh, so yeah, we we just thought we could capture those those voices, and uh, you know it's an entertaining show. This it's, is a hit show, and uh, a lot of good characters. Yeah, and it, you know, in terms of spec scripts, it kind of falls in that category of the show hasn't been on too long. Yeah. Um, but it's but it's very popular and everyone knows it, so it's kind of a good. Uh, it seemed like a good show to do a, a spec script of, for example. It was funny. It's for, sorry for interrupting, but it was funny for like a spec screenplay, like for especially sitcoms. This was a tough one because uh, Zoe Deschanel's character, she's kind of like really hard to be played by somebody else or like it's kind of like a really difficult role to fill because she's kind of like it's like you know how like you, you know some you watch a film or you watch a movie where somebody can get be casted you can see another person in that role it's hard to see someone else in that role besides her yeah she's got a she's got a very unique personality it's, it's it is hard to throw someone in there i thought the actress who did it did a really good job though i thought she kind of captured um Zoe's wackiness, and Zoe does a lot of, you know, voices, and, and I thought she, she captured that really well. Aaron Brooke, was that her name? Yeah. Brooke? Energy, good energy, yeah. And, and so, have you guys written other spec scripts uh, together? Yeah, we, well, we actually submitted to you uh, um, a spec script for the show Mom. Okay. Um, and we've, uh, we've done uh, a bunch of screenplays and uh, two pilots, I think. And we're working on one now, so yeah, we've we've written a lot of stuff together. Where do you, where did you guys meet? Uh, out here in LA. Oh, you guys are you guys are you guys both from New York City? Because I saw that you're both like uh, basketball fans. I'm from uh, I'm from Massachusetts. I'm a Celtics fan. And you're a Knicks fan. Yeah, so I'm New York, he's Massachusetts, and uh, we came out here around the same time. And yeah, but we're both East Coasters originally. No, sorry, that's what I kind of meant. Like you guys have to sort of have the same kind of uh, vibe, but you, you didn't meet until until you moved out to LA. Right? Yeah, yeah. We have the same kind of plan, you know, the East Coast cynicism thing. So, like, how did you guys meet? Because you know, like, writing partners are like kind of like soulmates in a sense, where you know, there's always a good story there. <laughs> I think we barely tolerate each other. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry always relaxed when George left the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a Seinfeld reference. But where did you, how did you guys like? How did you guys meet? I played some basketball. Mutual friend. I went to college with Mika. Yeah. Okay, so you guys both went to college out, out west. Uh, no, no, no. We, we we met through a mutual friend who I went to college with. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, yeah. So then we we met out here and just started uh, we started writing together. So as a as a partner team, like there's so many different ways you can collaborate. Do you guys work together, or do you guys like split split off and like you guys have different strengths and weaknesses? Like, what's your process? Um, well, I'm strong at everything, but uh, <laughs> no, we, we we you know honestly we, we try to get together when we can. When we can't, we'll just email back and forth, or we'll you know literally or we'll be on the phone together, and one of us will be taking notes. So it's just a matter of like getting it done whenever we can. Okay. So 
but there's a lot of correspondence back and forth on when we can meet with you. Yeah, we have, I work a night job, he works a day job, so but we try to get on the phone every day at least. Yeah. And do you guys, like, uh, do you, like, do you guys, like, besides, like, do you guys just have, like, the same, how did you guys know that you're going to be writing partners? Like, what what was the attraction? Basketball? Like, the same kind of, like, love for Seinfeld? What, what is it? Uh, I, think, <laughs> I think we were we were playing a lot of basketball at the Venice Beach Courts, and we kept talking about this script, Hungry Man, a competitive eating script, like a competitive eating comedy. Yeah. And we kept just, this title would come up every now and then. Eventually, we're like, well, let's just try to write this thing. Okay. And so then you just basically that's that's the that was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Yeah, we started grinding it out at a coffee shop and eating lots of uh, indulgent desserts. <laughs> isn't that where uh, where Woody uh, with the white man can't jump? Isn't that where it's set in the basketball courts on Venice Beach? Uh, we're we're literally a block away from those courts right now. So that's where Griff lives in Venice. So we've got a lot of wins out there. <laughs> and you guys like do, do you guys do some hustling there? Or? Uh, no, I'm not good enough for that. He is. <laughs> we, we would just try to get out of there with our lives intact. There's a lot of uh, things to get a little heated, but it's a good time. Yeah, we just try not to get into stupid <laughs> arguments out there. We try to just get some exercise and some sunshine. We try not to turn an ankle. We haven't, we haven't been playing as much lately, to be honest. We've been trying to really get this script career going. Cool. And you, so you guys are a team then? Like, you guys are... You guys are a package if you want to get hired by a writing, writing staff or... Right. That, exactly. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> That's our goal is to, get, is to get on a writing staff for a TV show. That's why we're writing these uh, you know, TV specials. Sure, of course. That's sort of the, 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 mass, the, the madness behind it all, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I think uh, from what I've heard, you know, they like, they like writing partners. They get two for one. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Do they split it up? How does it work? Do they split it up in half, like... Salary? Like, what is that? I don't, I'm always curious how that works. You know, I don't know the actual financials, but yeah, they don't have to pay as much for two people. That's kind of the bottom line. Gotcha. And it's like, it's a, it's very much in the creative ven- venues. Like, uh, I see a lot of, like, uh, in terms of, like, the, the dramas, like in Mad Men or Sopranos, they always had, like, we're writing partners kind of a thing. Right. Yeah, exactly. So it seems to be, like, it, it, it does make sense because... You know, like if one person's having a bad day, then the other person can carry the person's weight and vice versa, right? Yeah, yeah, it's that. Um, you know, it's yeah, exactly. There, there's less kind of uh, there's less kind of writer's block because someone's always coming up with an idea too. And also in terms of getting your stuff out there, you know, I'll send out emails to people. He'll send out emails to people. So we feel like we can cover more ground that way too. That's but listen, guys, I'm being honest here. We get a lot of TV specs. I love. I would love to, it's what people don't understand. It's like, I would love to showcase as many as we possibly can, but we only can show them when, when the script's ready, right? And a lot of people try, and it's like you guys are you guys are in the lead class. Like you guys wrote a really good script, and uh, you guys should be proud of that. I'm just like telling you from my perspective. Oh, that's that's Thank really you. nice of you to say. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. And you should be. You guys should be definitely on your way. That's like that's for that's for sure. Especially in the comedy genre, you guys seem to you hit the three. You got you got your A plot, B plot, C plot. You hit your characters, and you actually did something interesting for spec that that's kind of risky that people don't. They probably don't recommend. But you did like that silent movie scene. That's kind of interesting. Like kind of like it's kind of a gutsy move for, on your part. Who came up with that? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, you know, I think I think Nika came up with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that because we did kind of agonize over it because we know the show isn't a silent show. Yeah. So, but um, you know, it was just a C plot, and Winston's C plots are always wacky and small. So if we were going to take a risk, that really wasn't a huge one to take, to be honest with you. In the end, you know, I, I feel like you can kind of go out on a limb with the Winston C plots in that show. Yeah, totally. Yeah, no, but it's but it's gutsy though. It, it, nonetheless, and you guys pulled it off because it's one of those things where you take a chance on it. It better work, right? So if it doesn't work, then it's like it ruins the rest of the script. Uh, I, I'm glad you weren't around when we thought of it because if you had told me that, I, we would have bailed on it. But no, it was a concern of ours. Um, but like I said, it was just a small C plot, and we had a good way of intertwining it with the other plots. So we said, you know. What the hell? And the new girl, such new girl, such a hit modern show. It was almost something you could see them doing. Yeah, they might want to go for it. Elizabeth Merriweather, yeah, the genius that she is. Yeah, it wasn't like a you know, it's not as formulaic as a multicam. So it, you know, 
we thought we'd get away with it. So congratulations again. Uh, before we leave you guys, it's, we're doing this podcast in February. Um, I'll ask you first, Griff, when do you, what's the future of the Boston Celtics? Uh, we're building. We've got the good GM. We're building and the coach. And uh, I don't know. Follow Peter Vesey on Twitter. That's, that's what keeps me up to date. Peter Vesey on Twitter? Peter Vesey. I thought he was a New York. Isn't he a New York writer? He is. Yeah, he's, uh, he's really good about responding to people. Yeah, he's good. He interacts with the fans. Cool. And so you're gonna, you, you guys going to trade uh, Rajo? Uh, I think it's looking that way because, you know, the Cody Rondo doesn't like to rebuild, I don't think. Yeah, exactly. And what about the Knicks? Uh, can you fire your owner? Are you allowed to do that? How do you get rid of this guy? You want to end on such a sour note? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think... I think what's going to happen is is they're going to re-sign Melo for a lot of money. Yeah. And they're going to be uh, very average or slightly above average for a long time and keep selling out the garden and making lots of money and not winning a championship. And that, so then basically rinse and repeat, keep going on and on and on, right? Yeah, it doesn't seem like they're ever willing to rebuild, unfortunately. And which is unfortunate because, it's like, I think I was telling you in an email, I was saying, like, that the, the NBA, it's like, they want to be a superpower, right? Like, and they need that city to be, have a good, have a contender, right? So. Yeah, the, the show must go on. you got to at least keep them as a playoff team. So, you know, no one wants to see the Knicks bottom out, but. Yeah, but the playoff team, and then but always a sweep, always four. It doesn't really make, that's not a real playoff team, you know what I mean? Like, they got to go to the second round at least. Yeah, and really, with the Heat and the Pacers being so good right now, it's a good time to rebuild. So, is there any chance of LeBron James re-signing with the Knicks? No, there isn't. There's like zero chance. <laughs> uh, there's a chance, but not in his mind. <laughs> okay. Seems like a no. Why would he want to go to to a team who's managed that way? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm hoping he comes to the Clippers personally. Do you real? Oh, so you guys can go see him? Oh, yeah, we can shoot right down and go watch him dunk all over the Lakers. <laughs> okay, so as we're doing this, who's going to win the who's going to win the championship this year? I'll go with the Heat if if, if Wade's healthy. There's my edge. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go Spurs. The Spurs, eh? Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think they're going to get by Oklahoma City. I think this is their year. Ooh, okay, I think uh, I think Spurs over Pacers in seven. Over, so basically the Heat's not even get get by the Pacers. Yeah, I think the Pacers are. Uh, this, yeah, the the buying a pickup. They'll win a game seven at home. I hope. I really hope they do. I think Oklahoma State is going to beat the Heat, and it's going to be the t- t- the torch is going to be passed over to uh, Durant. That's my two cents. That'd be great. I'm hey, That sounds. I'm all for that. All right, guys. It was great talking to you again, and congratulations, and just keep in touch because you guys are—you guys definitely have a future ahead of you. Oh, uh, thank you. Really appreciate the time. Thank you.